Hi everyone, it's Tammy with Shabby Fabrics. I have such an adorable project for you today. This is so useful. You're gonna wanna make one for every child in your life. This is so cute. This is a fabric basket. I'm gonna show you the inside, the outside. This is perfect for books, for toys, for kids just to fill with whatever. I would actually take this in the car and let them fill their favorite toys to go on a trip. How fun is that? Yes, I love it. And it keeps all your toys together, everything together when, they're, when you're traveling in the car, especially because stuff just goes everywhere. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to make this. The collection today I'm using is called We Safari. We have a quilt behind me is called Little Pathways and that is available as a kit. This is available as a kit. We have a pillowcase. We do have a pillowcase kit available. We also have the Ultimate Toddler Bibs, and we'll be doing a video on those as well, so you can grab that one if you're looking to make some bibs for your young children. So, here we go. First of all, this pattern is a free download, so you're just gonna click the link right below this, this box, uh, right below the video here. It's gonna take you straight to that free download, be able to print that out, and off you go. If you choose to purchase the kit, we will print that for you. It will be included in your kit, so you're not gonna have to go back and find it. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is we're gonna take our fusible fleece and we are gonna cut two 18-inch squares of fusible fleece and of our fun print, whatever print is gonna be on the outside of your basket. We're gonna fuse this. I have fused this ahead of time. I've got fusible fleece on the back here. You can see that. And we have our fun little jungle print on the front. First thing I need to do is I'm gonna take and cut a four and a half inch square out of two corners at the bottom. And that's to box the corners with. So I have a Creative Grids four and a half inch square. I'm gonna set this right in the corner like this and I'm just gonna mark it with a friction pen. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Just two sides is all I'm gonna mark. There we go. Okay, now you can cut this with a pair of scissors. I would recommend something like the Karen K. Buckley, something a little heftier than the small embroidery scissors that we usually use to trim threads next to our machines. That's why I've got this larger pair on set with me today. Uh, these have a serrated blade and they really cut nicely through fabric. So I can show you that and just go ahead and oh, they are just cutting so easily. I love these scissors. The handles are very comfortable, not a problem. Now the other way to cut this, quilters, we love our rotary cutters, right? However, I don't wanna cut past this. So I would put my ruler in the corner and I'm just gonna rotary cut up to this corner. I'm not going all the way into that corner when I'm cutting that. Then when I start, I'm gonna set my blade down flat like this, just straight down and come down. So now I just have the corner and for that I would go back in with a pair of scissors. Whatever you prefer to do, those are the two ways to do it. Okay, the other thing you're gonna wanna do is if you want to pre-quilt this fabric. The sample that we did here, we quilted with a lattice with a grid and we just took a ruler marked with a friction pen and then just sewed on the lines. Now I'm not gonna do that today because that's gonna take a lot of time to quilt it. I'm not gonna take that time here to do that. So mine today is going to be unquilted, all right? So I need two of these. So I did another one ahead of time, just like this, all right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these right sides together and I'm gonna line up my side seams. These are my side seams. These are my box corners. This is the bottom, all right? So I'm gonna line up my side seams and I'm gonna pin these together and sew them. And today I'm going to use the Cool Pins by Gypsy Quilter. These are really nice pins. 
got a little more heft to them. You know me, I'm normally using my extra fine patchwork pins, but today I'm going to use a little bit heavier pin because I'm going through a lot of thickness. So I'm going to pin this side. I'm going to go ahead and put some pins on this side while I'm at it. And then we'll go to the machine. Now the seam allowance on this is different than a normal quarter of an inch. As quilters, we're all about that quarter inch seam allowance. But today, we're going to use a half inch seam allowance. That's going to give a little more stability to this so that the seams are not going to tear apart. I expect it to take some rough and tumble playing. You're going to fill it with books and toys and be all over the house with it. I, I want to be a little more generous with my seam allowance, all right? So to do that, I'm gonna use a seam guide because a half an inch is not a normal seam allowance for a quilter. So I need a little reminder in my head when I go to the sewing machine, oh yeah, move that over and do a half an inch. So let me show you how I put this on my machine. All of these are an eighth of an inch, all of these little lines. So this one is my perfect quarter inch right here. This would be three eighths, this would be four eighths, and this one is actually marked five eighths. I wanna set my seam guide at four eighths, which is half an inch, just like that. These have sticky on the back of them. There we go, I'm just gonna stick that right down just like that, and I'm ready to sew. Let's get these pins out now. As I was sewing, I was definitely moving these pins out of my seam allowance if I had one too close. These are hefty pins. You do not want to run over this and take a chance on striking this pin with your sewing machine. I think this could do some damage. You're definitely going to break a needle if you hit one of these pins. So be very careful. All right, so I'm going to press my seams open on this. All right. So let's take this to the pressing mat. Now to accomplish this, I'm just gonna turn this like this. I'm gonna take this little Panasonic iron and I'm just gonna go right in there and press this seam right open. And that half inch guide, boy, that really helped me because your brain is telling you, no, it's a quarter. <laughs> I love how we get trained. We train our minds and our, it's an automatic thing just to sew at a quarter of an inch. That seam guide helped to remind me don't do that. Okay, press the top out here, or the bottom actually, this is the bottom. I'm just gonna kind of press this on top of itself, but I just need to get these seams pressed a little bit here. There we go, that'll work. All right, let's box the corners. That's what's next. All right, so when I put this on the table, you can see the bottom is here. The side I had facing toward me, and I'm just gonna simply match my seam allowances because they're both pressed open. I'm gonna take one of these pins. I'm going in and in. Just like that, I'm pinning both sides of this. Now, I'm just gonna let this naturally come out to a point. And this one, same thing. Right out to a point. I have no tucks in there. I was running my finger in there to make sure I have no tucks. And you know, I'm gonna go ahead and pin the other side as long as I'm here and sew both of them at the same time. Pin both sides of that. I don't want that seam allowance to flip on me at all. I want them to lay flat. This one and the other. Okay, there we go, both sides. So you can see how I have that pinned. Okay, I'm gonna take this to the machine and I'm gonna sew from here to here, half inch seam allowance, and I'm definitely gonna back tack at both ends, beginning and end, all right? 
Here we go. Now I know what you want to do right now. You want to turn it right side out to see what it looks like, right? We're not going to do that. I'm simply going to put my hand in, just kind of work those corners out a little bit, and I'm going to set this to the side. All right, let's work on the lining. So now when I did the lining, I pieced together the cuff or the little trim that's going to come down. We have the lining piece and we have another piece of the green. The green is going to go in the bottom of this. That way it's not going to get as dirty as it would if I had white throughout the whole thing. All right, so the same as before. We're going to do this exactly the same way. I'm going to mark both my corners. I don't have fusible fleece on this one. On this one, we're using a different type of stabilizer, and that stabilizer does come in your kit, so you don't have to worry about trying to find that, or the fusible fleece as well. I did top stitch this. I think you can see that. I top stitched this on both sides of my folds. So when I sewed this with a half inch seam allowance, I pressed that seam open and I did top stitch that down. All right. All right, let's go ahead and mark both of these. All right. So I'm gonna cut this. I'm going to put it together with the other side. I'm gonna box the corners and press my seams open. And when I come back, we'll go to the next step. All right, here I am back. I have done the lining. I have this all box corners. I lined up my seams right here on the edges so that everything would match when I turn it. This one, we actually get to turn this one through. So let's turn that now. I do have a point turner on set with me. If you have one, these are great for making sure those points are nice and sharp in these corners. You just kind of poke those out a little bit. There we go, just like that. All right, let's grab our basket. All right, I'm gonna set this with the side seam facing you and me. So my side seams are here. Here, I'm gonna put this into there and I'm gonna match my side seams. Here we go. Oh, this is such a fun and easy project. You could easily do this in an afternoon. This is so fun. All right, here we go with our side seams. I'm gonna match those together, definitely using these heftier pins. I know I'm gonna sew a half an inch all the way around this, so I need to make sure I am putting those pins well out of my sewing machine's path. Okay, we'll do the same on this side. One and two. I'm pinning both sides of that seam allowance. I don't want that going anywhere. All right. Now, I need to leave an opening to turn this through. Okay? So let's take a look. I'm just going to pick an, a side between my two side seams. So I don't want a side seam in the middle of something like that. Just going to use a ruler and I'm just going to mark it with a friction pen. And I'm going to mark about six, six and a half inches. All right, I want to give myself plenty of room to turn something like this through because there's a lot of bulk here. I've got fusible, I've got fusible fleece. So I'm going to go with about six and a half inches. Let's go ahead and just pin this the rest of the way around just to secure this. All right, just about there. All 
I don't want these layers separating on me. And pin around my opening. So I'm gonna do a back tack when I start and when I end. So I'm gonna start sewing. There we go. I'm gonna start sewing right here. Oop, I should probably put this down all the way to the end. There we go. I'm gonna start sewing here, back tack all the way around and back tack here, all right? Again, half inch seam allowance, reminder. Here we go. All right, let's get our pins out. And we finally get to turn it through. I know, this is the point we've been waiting for, right? There we go. All right, my opening is here. I'm gonna reach in and I'm gonna grab one of these, pull it through. and then reach in and grab the rest of it. Just kind of turn half through at a time. There we go. Oh, this is so cute. I just love this collection. Such fun. I love being able to coordinate a whole room with this. How fun is that? All right, so now I have kind of a wreck going on here. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna push the lining down into my bag, all right? Or into my, I suppose it's a basket, not a bag. Could be a tote bag, right? All right, let's get this in here. So now I'm just kind of running my fingers down in there and pushing my fingers into the corners just to make that lining remember, oh yeah, that's how I wanna go. All right, now I'm gonna kinda Wet my fingers a little bit so I can roll this seam. Oop, I have a stray thread here. Let's get rid of that. Now I need to roll this seam. Now I'm gonna use a wonder clip because now I have so much going on here. When I top stitch this, I wanna make sure that I don't have a bunch of pins in here because I already know I'm gonna get poked. Okay, so I'm just gonna roll this seam making sure it's right where I want it. And I know it looks a little weird because I have the outside of the bag and the fun part, the cup, is on the inside. That's correct. This is how you do this. Keep going around a little bit. All right, so this is my opening. Here it is. I know I had an opening here somewhere. All right, let's take the opening, and I'm, it kind of already wants to go in. I can see those seam allowances. They're already trying to turn their way in. I'm gonna go ahead and press that half an inch in with my iron. Let's go ahead and do that. That's just gonna make that lay in there all the better. So I just want a half an inch. This Panasonic iron is nice because it doesn't have a cord attached to it. So it just comes along with me. Wherever I need to go with it, it comes right along for the ride and I like that. Okay, I'm gonna turn this over. Do the same thing on this side, just like that. I'm gonna hang on to that for a minute. That fusible fleece sometimes needs to be coaxed into pressing. That interfacing pressed really easy, but that fusible fleece sometimes needs a little bit extra of a press. I'm just gonna kind of hold that there a minute. There we go. All right, let's take a look. Yep, that's just like I want it. Okay. Now I can continue with my wonder clips all along the edge. So when I'm placing these clips on here, there is a right side and a wrong side. The wrong side is the flat part on the bottom. The right side is the pretty color. So I'm putting the colors facing, facing me. The wrong side is here and that is gonna slide along the bed of my sewing machine. 
If I put it on the other direction, this would get caught because it's rounded. All right, let's keep working this on around, just like that. Okay, I think I've got enough clips in this. I am ready to go to the machine. So I'm gonna stitch all the way around. Now this is a top stitch, so I'm not gonna use a half inch seam allowance. I'm gonna go right along the edge, probably an eighth of an inch from this edge. I'm gonna keep that pretty tight. I'm also gonna take the sewing machine table off of my machine. It's gonna make it a lot easier to stitch. Okay, here we go. Now the fun part. Now we get to run our cuff down and give this to the anxious toddler who's patiently waiting next to you to go fill with their favorite toys. How fun. I just love organization projects like this. Something for your, the rooms. I'm gonna go ahead and press this so that this cuff stays where I want it to. I'm gonna just give this a really quick press. Just kind of crease it a little bit. Oh yes, I think I have grandchildren that need several of these cute little baskets for their room. I'd line them all up in a row and put all kinds of fun stuff in them. How cute is this project? So much fun. I love that they're easy to make, super simple to make, so that you can easily change their rooms up. You know, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put a crease right here in the corners so it'll hang on to its shape a little bit better. There we go. Let's do that on this side too. I'm just coming from the bottom where I box that corner straight up. Put my finger in there and grab that. And just go straight up that side and give that a quick press. And it'll kind of be more box-like or basket-like is what we're going for. There we go. How cute. All right. There we go. And there's our basket. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this project as much as I did. I know I'm going to be making several. I would love to see what you guys make. Please post your pictures on our YouTube. You can put them on Facebook or Instagram. Michelle will always take a, a screenshot and she always shows me what you guys are doing. And I love to see that. I love to see what you guys are doing. So thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time on a Shabby Fabrics tutorial.